When I suddenly woke up, a white ceiling greeted my eyes. Glancing around, I understood that I was in a hospital room. I distinctly remember my stomach suddenly hurting. Yes, that's right. I recall losing consciousness after a sudden stomach ache during a meal. Presumably, I was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. But why did this happen? I always check the expiration dates of the ingredients in the refrigerator. I haven't eaten out anywhere. If not, what caused such a stomach ache? As I reflect on my actions, the door to the hospital room suddenly opened. There, with a pale face and short of breath, was my daughter. She slowly approached me, wearing an incredible expression on her face. When I asked her, Is something wrong? My daughter opened her heavy mouth. My name is Michelle Clark, and I'm 38 years old. I'm a normal office worker working for a generic company. I've been married to my husband Caleb for 11 years. We discovered my pregnancy right after registering our marriage. And the following year, our daughter Carly was born. My daughter Carly just turned 10 a few days ago. She's growing up healthy every day without any major illnesses. My husband and I both work, providing some financial flexibility in our household. We regularly go shopping as a family of three and occasionally travel. Although we can't afford extravagances since we also save money for our daughter's future. Still, living with my beloved husband and adorable daughter is the greatest happiness for me. However, lately, I've been feeling uneasy about my husband. It's not anything significant, but his behavior seems a bit different from before. For example, how he spends his time at home. Since our marriage, he rarely used to look at his smartphone at home. My husband was never tech savvy, and I always had to teach him how to use gadgets. He even bought a lady's smartphone a few years ago, but didn't include any game apps, saying that his only work was to communicate with his family. However, it feels like he has been spending significantly more time on his smartphone in the past few months. Recently, he has been looking at his phone with a happy expression. So I became curious and asked him, Hey Caleb, lately you've been messing with your smartphone a lot. Are you hooked on something? Huh? Uh, no, it's not like that. It's an app my junior colleague at work recommended, and it's really interesting. Oh, really? Then why not teach it to Carly too? She just got a smartphone, you know. Yeah, that's a good idea. But teaching her game apps might interfere with her studies, right? It's okay, she's responsible. Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay, I will teach Carly next time. My husband, with a somewhat awkward smile, desperately tried to maintain his usual demeanor. However, it's been 11 years since we got married. As a wife, I easily notice when something is off with him. Since our daughter was already asleep, I continued my investigation. Hey, Caleb, there's really something, right? Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? There's nothing. But things have been different lately. You are always on your phone. And on days off, you go out for practice alone. So we have fewer opportunities to go out as a family, unlike before. Well, you see, there is a company golf outing and camping with colleagues. Various work related events, you know. That's part of the job, so I can't help it. Are you really not hiding anything? Oh,、uh, no, of course not. Why would I lie to you, Michelle? My husband's smile is the same as I always knew him to be. I knew there was something going on, but I didn't feel like questioning him farther. A few days later, as I was preparing breakfast, 
My daughter Carly woke up. Good morning, Carly. I greeted her, pretending everything was normal, but there was no response. Turning my gaze to my daughter, I saw her with a somewhat gloomy expression, looking down. I stopped preparing breakfast and rushed to my daughter. Carly, is something wrong? Are you feeling unwell? No, no, I'm fine. But you seem down. Did something unpleasant happen at school? You didn't seem like this last night. Well, mom, um, no, it's really nothing. I'm fine. Carly, I felt a sense of discomfort in Carly's way of speaking. But in such cases, pressing too much would be counterproductive. If she is troubled by something, it's better to wait until she wants to talk. I stopped trying to inquire farther and gently spoke to my daughter. Carly, if there is anything, you can always talk to me. I will do anything to help you, for your sake, Carly. Mom, I'm sorry. Thank you. It's okay. No need to apologize. Adolescence is a time when you worry about very things, right? I was like that too. My daughter smiled a little awkwardly at my words. I had thought that Carly was troubled by something at school. However, at that moment, I still hadn't realized that my daughter's worries were much bigger than I had imagined. A month passed, but my husband's behavior had definitely become strange. He used to come home at 9 p.m. no matter how late. But lately, he has been coming home beyond midnight every night. My daughter and I would fall asleep without waiting for his return. But we always woke up at the sound of the front door opening. Checking the smartphone, it was past midnight. And on some days, it was even past 1 a.m. Certainly, after enduring such days for two weeks, I could sense that something was wrong. I couldn't overlook this anymore. That's what I thought. So I decided to wait for my husband to come home and talk things over. As I dozed off while waiting, the front door finally opened after midnight. My husband seems to be on the phone with someone, and I could hear a cheerful conversation. They were talking in the hallway so I couldn't make out the content of the conversation, but it was too loud for just talking to oneself. Welcome back. Who were you talking to? In the hallway, when I greeted my husband, he opened his eyes wide and quickly pocketed his smartphone. Oh, you're awake. Huh? Weren't you on the phone just now? Is it okay to cut off the call so suddenly like that? Huh? What call? I wasn't on the phone. I was watching a video. So maybe you heard the audio? A video? You were watching it while walking home? I've been into it lately. Just listening to the audio is interesting enough. Like a radio show. Hmm. The husband is clearly flustered. Once I noticed this, I sat him down on the couch and asked him clearly, Hey, isn't it strange that you've been coming home so late recently? Oh, what's strange about it? It's just overtime. There's nothing I can do about it. Has there been overtime every day like that? For almost the past 10 years, there was hardly any overtime, and you used to come home by 9 p.m. at the latest. Why is there suddenly so much overtime now? Isn't it strange? Even if you say that, hey now, we are short-staffed. Young people these days quit so easily. Even so, is it normal for you to suddenly have so much overtime? Do other people at the company also stay this late? I'm doing voluntarily. I want to get promoted and be useful to everyone. You'd understand my feelings, right, Michelle? I too, I'm an office worker like my husband. 
I would like to be promoted if I could. I understand that feeling. However, every day, just like this, he comes home after midnight and sacrifices every holidays. Being someone with a family, I wonder as a father, is that really okay? Even our daughter Carly must have been feeling lonely all this time, worried about the weakening bonds within the family. I confronted my husband directly. Hey Caleb, I understand that you want to work hard and I support you, but can't you think a little about Carly? About Carly? We haven't been going out together as a family for a while, right? Every day, you come home late. Carly doesn't get to see her father, and she must be feeling lonely. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. I would try to adjust my work schedule. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. My husband responded wearily, took out his smartphone, and started using it. It was to the point that I doubted whether he had even listened to my words. As expected, my husband didn't change his behavior, and the days of late returns continued. Despite my regular request for him to come home early and spend holidays with our daughter, he insisted that work was busy. It seemed like my husband found my reminders bothersome. Over time, he started ignoring me when I spoke, and our conversations as a couple almost disappeared. One day, something unusual happened. On this Friday, my husband returned home unusually early, and then he made a surprising statement. Tomorrow, I will take care of all the housework. Let's go out as a family during the day. Eh? Really? Yeah, I've been making you and Carly feel lonely all the time. Thank you, Caleb. Finally, it seemed like my feelings had gotten through and tears welled up. True to his declaration, the next morning, my husband finished cleaning, did the laundry, and even prepared breakfast. On the table were scrambled egg, toast, salad, and yogurt. It wasn't a complicated menu, but the fact that he made it, it was heartwarming. At my seat, there was even coffee, showing consideration from my husband. Let's eat. Is it strange to have a meal together as a family of three? Carly still seemed preoccupied, but going out together might lift our spirits. While thinking about this, I felt a discomfort in my stomach as we continued breakfast. Immediately after, I was struck by sudden abdominal pain. Ouch! Without a second thought, I fell from my chair, crouching on the floor. My daughter, who rushed to me, was on the verge of tears. Mom! Mom! Are you okay? C Carly, yeah, I'm fine. Lies! You're not okay! Hey mom, do you have a tummy ache? Yeah, a little. With a pain I had never felt before, sweat poured from my whole body. In my fading consciousness, I realized something. My daughter was the only one worried about me. My husband didn't utter a word. Unable to move due to my crouched position, I couldn't see my husband's expression. Struggling to maintain consciousness, I desperately pleaded, Please, take me to the hospital. Then my consciousness faded away. A few hours later, suddenly waking up, a white ceiling greeted my eyes. Looking around, I understood that I was in a hospital room. I remember suddenly feeling pain in my stomach. That's right. I recall experiencing sudden abdominal pain during the meal. Most likely, I was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. But why did this happen? I regularly check the expiration dates of the ingredients in the refrigerator. I hadn't eaten outside, 
So what caused the intense abdominal pain? Reflecting on my actions, the hospital door suddenly opened. There, with a pale face and out of breath, was my daughter. Approaching me slowly, she wore an incredible expression. In response to my inquiry about what happened, my daughter uttered heavy words. It's all dad's fault. Huh? I inadvertently asked for clarification from my daughter. What do you mean? In response to my question, Kali took out her smartphone and showed me a video. Uh, no, is this? The video depicted my husband making a call in the living room. Throughout the conversation, Caleb wore a delighted expression, chatting enthusiastically. However, the content of the conversation was dreadful. Oh, don't worry. I'm getting ready. That laxative, right? I've already bought it, and I will just add it to her meal. Next time, I will casually prepare a meal and mix it in for my wife. Casually engaging in such a conversation, my husband, the person on the phone is probably his affair partner or something. After the video ended, my daughter clung to me, crying. Mom, I'm sorry. That was talking to someone when I woke up in the middle of the night before. So I recorded a video and then... Carly, I'm sorry. You've been feeling down because of this, right? I wanted to tell you, Mom. But if I did, would you guys still be together? Thank you, Carly. You must have thought a lot about it. But it's okay now. Yeah. I think you are more important. I really hate that for doing such a terrible thing. I embraced my crying daughter tightly, stroking her head. At that moment, my parents entered the room. Why are mom and dad? Carly contacted me. She asked for help. Carly did? She said help mom. Even though she is small, she sought help. According to my daughter, right after I collapsed, my husband went somewhere. Carly called an ambulance and at the same time phoned my parents. Upon hearing the details, my parents were furious. Naturally, my husband had betrayed not only me, but also our daughter and my parents. At that time, an anger I had never felt before overwhelmed me. Without a doubt, I couldn't continue this relationship as a married couple. Then, a short time later, the door to the hospital room opened again. To my surprise, my husband, looking panic, came running in. Michelle, are you okay? His blatantly insincere attitude left me without words. If I remained silent, he would continue speaking with feigned sniffling. Sorry, I went out during the meal. We were out of milk, so I thought I would go buy some. Oh really? Weren't you in the same room when I collapsed in pain? Just at that moment, I happened to step outside. Sorry, if I had been there with you at that time. My husband feigning tears received cold stares from everyone present. He hadn't yet realized that his lies had been exposed. To my husband, I bluntly said, Just so you know, everyone already knows what you orchestrated. What? What are you talking about? What did I do? Kali showed me the video of you talking to your affair partner. You were discussing putting a laxative in my food and how enjoyable it would be. Why would I do that? My husband, looking alarmed, fell silent. Upon seeing his demeanor, I became convinced that he had indeed plotted the affair. Piercing stares from my mother, daughter, and even me were directed at him. As my husband visibly turned pale, I delivered the final blow. 
Even the stories about working overtime are probably lies, right? Cheating on the family and having an affair. You are truly despicable. Despite having a wife and child, I'm deeply ashamed to have been married to you. I'm divorcing you. Leave that house right now. Wait a minute. Let's at least talk. What? There's no need to talk to you anymore. Got it? I will make sure to claim alimony from you. I won't let you go until you paid it all off. I will never forgive you and the woman you cheated on me with. I will drag both of you down to hell. With that, my husband hastily left the hospital room. Upon being discharged and returning home, I handed my husband the divorce papers and along with my daughter, returned to my parents' home. Since my husband was unwilling to agree to the divorce, I proceeded with the divorce proceedings through the lawyer I hired, demanding alimony from Caleb and his affair partner. I demanded a settlement from Caleb instead of filing a police report regarding a laxative incident. Thanks to my highly skilled lawyer, my husband quickly agreed to our terms. After paying compensation in a lump sum from borrowed funds, he was apparently easily discarded by his affair partner. Now, he spends his days shuttling between work and home to repay the debt. His parents have disowned him, and he leads a solitary life with no one to rely on. On the other hand, I am peacefully living with my parents in Carly at my family home. While I feel sorry for taking away a father from my daughter, I believe this choice was the right one. I aim to cooperate with my parents and shower my daughter with plenty of love in the days to come.